Hi everybody, my name is Allie. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. If you're returning, welcome back. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. We recently reached over 600 subscribers, which is like more than I imagined. I literally just made this channel because I live alone and I don't have friends who read. So I decided to talk to random people on the internet. But there's 600 of you now, which is super cool and I appreciate you. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed, go for it. Yeah. If you're new here, I am deaf. I wear bilateral hearing aids. I'm legally deaf. Um, I know basic sign, but I was raised in a speaking household. My main form of communication is speaking. That's still a big part of my life. My mother is also deaf. My grandfather is. If you're returning, you know I have done previous videos about deaf and hearing aids and all that. If you're new here, feel free to go check those out. I can um, link them for you. I've done a couple. I figured I would kind of mesh the two areas together, kind of the deaf area of my life and the book area of my life kind of fuse those together. So I wanted to give you guys my top three deaf book representation recommendations. So my top three favorite deaf books. <laughs> deaf representation in books like most other forms of media is not a lot. Um, it is something that's kind of underrepresented and like most things, most things with disabilities, it's slowly getting better but it's not where it should be. So in terms of books, there aren't that many books with deaf characters, especially deaf main characters, and it depends on how they're written. Sometimes you can tell if it's a book written by someone who is deaf or someone that just has a cousin's friend's niece that's deaf. So it's a different experience for everyone, but um, I wanted to give you my top three. Ones that like I as a deaf person resonated with me and my personal experience and a couple of like my other deaf friends that also really enjoyed them. I kind of have like three different tiers. The first book is kind of just like, you don't need to know any sort of thing, it's just kind of a deaf main character. The second tier is like a deaf main character with maybe a little bit of backstory. And then my third one is more of like, if you want to educate yourself, it's not really a super light reading thing, like even I like spent like three weeks reading it just because it's so like dense, but yeah, you'll see. So the first book that I'm going to recommend you guys is one that I actually recently read and I loved it. It is Give Me a Sign by Anna Sortino. I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. This book was actually on my TBR for this month. I could tag that video. I just started doing TBRs for myself. I read this book. I loved it. I five-starred it. So this is just a really nice YA romance with deaf main characters. You don't need to have any sort of educative background. This gives you really basic kind of education if you know nothing, but it's nothing super heavy where everything is just about education. It's a romance book. It's got good friendships. I love all the side characters. It's genuinely just a really good book. I think this is a good place to start if you want to add more deaf representation into what you're reading. So our main character is this girl right here. Her name is Lila. She is, um, like me, legally deaf, wears hearing aids, lives in a home of people who are speaking, but at the end of the day is deaf. So she's kind of in this in-between state of, I'm deaf, there's this big part of me, like sign language is an option, but speaking is an option. It's this kind of weird gray area that a lot of people like me sometimes have a hard time struggling with, figuring out where you should identify, if you okay with being someone who's speaking, if you would rather. So it's her kind of growing up, coming of age story, kind of figuring out where she wants to land living in this middle gray area. She is legally deaf, whereas hearing aids grew up speaking. She becomes a camp counselor at a deaf summer camp. She went there a few times when she was younger, but she is now old enough to be a counselor. So she goes to counsel. While she's been at the summer camp, she's learned kind of basic sign language and it's something that she's really loved. So she wants to keep going to this camp to improve her sign language because she doesn't have anyone else to practice it with. She doesn't have any other deaf friends or family or anything. So this camp is kind of really her escape. She has a crush on the main male league Isaac, who is fully deaf, only communicates with sign language. So romance between these two and her and his coming of age story. The side characters are great. It has really light education. It's just really cute. It's very YA. It's high school kids. Not spicy in any way, but it's just genuinely so cute. If you really want to maybe get into some sort of like deaf representation, I highly suggest this one. It's really short, just over 300 pages. It's like 
307 or something so it's a quick read but I loved it I five starred it it was so cute I giggled it made me like because it was so cute but definitely annotated it because there was stuff that resonated with me yeah I don't know I just love it and I really recommend it so this is a really good place to start out and then kind of sticking in that same sort of high school romance genre but adding a little bit more depth to it, I recommend um, a book that I don't physically have. I read it on Kindle. I think it should is, I think it's still on Kindle Unlimited, but I read it on Kindle Unlimited. It is The Silence Between Us. This is again, like the high school romance deaf girl going to a speaking school and having a crush on a boy that knows nothing about being deaf and coming to terms with that. But this is a little bit like, I don't know if heavier is the right word, but it goes a lot more in depth on like the education aspect of it. There are a lot more of like inner monologues that I resonated with because it voiced things that I think on a daily basis, but it's a little bit more hold for motorcycle. <laughs> I feel like heavy is not the right term because talking about it's not a heavy thing, but it's just a lot more education based. It's less YA. It's still YA in the fact that it's a high school romance, but it's not as light and fluffy. Like you can tell the romance is more of like a back burner plot. It's supposed to be a book about being deaf, where I feel like give me a sign while well, being deaf is a big aspect of the book. It's still a romance book, where I feel like the silence between us is more deaf with a back subplot of romance. So yeah, if you read Give Me a Sign and you really like it and you want something that's a little bit more education based, then I would say go to The Silence Between Us. They are kind of generally the same plot. I don't really know if I need to explain it. Kind of the same plot with a little bit more education background. So then the third book that I'm going to recommend is still really great, but it is the most just it's a book about being deaf. You got different subplots, but they are subplots. This book, like, it even took me a little while to get through. Like, it took me like a month of just reading kind of chapters throughout the day because it's big. But that is True Biz by Sarah Novick. This is a book of the month book. Mine is somehow like scratched up like crazy. Tab the crap out of this, everything. I love it. And the cool thing about this book is it teaches you sign while you're reading. See if I can find a page. During some of the dialogue, they have pages that teaches you how to sign what the characters are talking about and signing to each other, which I think is something really cool. I haven't seen a book that necessarily does stuff like this. So that's really cool if you want to actually start like learning some sign. It does a really good job of showing you different signs that go along with the storyline. Teaches you like deaf, hearing, brother, sister, all of that. So this is more education focused. This book is a little bit more dense. It Hold for motorcycle. This book is a little bit more dense. It follows three characters. So it's three different characters in the same world three different versions of people dealing with deafness and how they're coming to terms with it in their own personal lives. It takes place in River Valley School for the Deaf. So one of the characters that this follows, there's three, is Austin. He is like the jock golden boy of this deaf school. They kind of, his family has like this running legacy. His family is like basically founded this school. Like his deaf family has been in this school for years. No one in his family is not deaf. He has to come to terms when his little sister is born hearing. She is the first person in his family to not be born deaf, and that kind of rocks this family history. He and his family is trying to figure out how to adjust to this abnormal thing that has now happened to their family. Um, one of the other characters is Charlie, who is deaf and has always gone to speaking schools. This is the first time she's gone to a deaf school, has never met another deaf person in her entire life. Um, she was raised speaking, so she's trying to figure out how to fit in with this world of people that she's never experienced before. And then finally, it, our last character, it follows February. She is the headmistress, headmistress like principal of this school and she is really struggling to keep this school running and she's having like home marital issues so it follows her trying to figure out how to keep this school funded and her trying to save her marriage so it has a lot more 
heavier themes than the other two. It is not in any way YA. It talks a lot more about life struggles and personal issues. Again, for me, growing up being deaf, it hit really hard for me. While I do still recommend this, I do think maybe you should start with Give Me a Sign or The Silence Between Us. You totally can start with this one, I won't stop you. But this was definitely one that like is heavy and is going to take some oomph to get through. It even took me a while to get through. It took me like a month to finish reading it, but it's so good. All of these books I five-starred, and I can't recommend them enough. So, if you are looking to add some deaf rep to your reading list, these are my top three choices. If you read any of them, um, let me know your thoughts and opinions. If you are also someone else in the deaf community and you have read these, um, how did you feel about these books? Did they resonate with you the same way that they did with me? Because again, everybody's disability is your own personal experience. Nothing is the same for everyone. These are just three that personally hit for me and my life experiences, but they may not hit for everybody. Nevertheless, I appreciate you guys for being here and opening yourselves up to maybe a new genre of reading. If you guys want to follow me anywhere on my social medias, they are all linked down below. Down below is also my Amazon wish list. if you want to send me any books that I have picked out, or you can add your own and send me your favorite books to read. Down below is also my Pango books. Um, last week, I will tag that video, I did a big book unhaul. I went through a bunch of books that like I one starred or DNF'd or I just know I won't read again, and I listed them for sale. So if you want to check out my Pango, if, uh, watch that video. If there's any books on there that you want, check my Pango out, see if they're still there. Um, and you can buy mine or you can search for other people's. I buy from Pango all the time. It's a much cheaper way of filling up your TBR and not having to pay full price for books. It's an online book thrift store. But other than that, I love and appreciate you guys so, so much. Thank you for hanging out with me. Stay safe and I will see you guys somewhere else on the internet. And happy fall. Bye.